tutorial we're going to talk about the YC waveform monitor. So again you find it under the panel menu, we're going to use our reference monitor to look at it and we go down to YC waveform. Now Y stands for luminance or the brightness of an item and C stands for chrominance or the colour of an item. So it's a graph that's going to show us the luminance of an item, or the brightness of an item, and also the colour range of an item. So if I click on YC Waveform, it gives us this graph. Now, I'm not actually going to be talking about the chrominance ranges, but just so you know, the green bar at the side here is talking about the luminance, and the lavender bar talks about the chrominance. And you can actually turn them off by clicking this little button here, chrominance, so I can turn off the chrominance, so that I just see the luminance range of the shot that I'm looking at. Now I also have a little button here for US or NTSC footage. Now it's important to say that NTSC footage is looked at via the IRE system, whereas PAL footage is actually dealt with in millivolts. Okay, I'm going to show you some PAL footage in a minute, but this setup for IRE 7.5 is about DV footage or analog footage and it's looking at setting up the analog footage where it's saying in the US but not in Japan so it's NTSC footage except Japanese NTSC footage for DV analog footage pure black is taken as 7.5 and it's this little dotted line down here now we're not dealing with analog footage we're actually dealing with digital footage so if you're not dealing with analog DV footage you don't really need the IRE setup and so you can go down from 0 to 100 now what are we looking at here? From left to right is the same as the image from left to right. However from bottom to top we're going to be looking at what's pure black or very dark at the bottom of the monitor and what's bright at the top of the monitor. So if something is 100% it's bright white and if it's right down here at zero or close to zero then it's very dark. For instance at this point here we've got a very dark line and if we go up to the footage we'll see that we've got a dark line under the cab just here. And if we look at some of these bright bits and pieces across, you can see well we've got a big white bit here, we've got a nice white bit here, and we've got some white on the guy's back here, which is going to be here, and we've got some white bits and pieces for the people's t-shirts, and this is giving us these white bits here. And if I just pull my current time indicator, my playhead through, you can even see that cyclist and the people walking, moving backwards and forwards. So you can see where those brightness and dark bits are. Now don't be deceived, obviously we've got dark bits for this cyclist. If I just pull it backwards and forwards we can see this cyclist coming through. We've got dark bits which are going to refer to say his trousers and his bag and his hair. And the light bits are going to refer to his t-shirt and the reflective bits off his bicycle. Now this is very useful for telling us if we've got a wide dynamic range of brightness and dark inside our footage. This is a pretty well lit shot and usually when you film outside, even under overcast conditions, you get a very well lit shot. But sometimes when you shoot inside, you don't have a very wide dynamic range. And when you don't have this very wide range, you want to use your colour correction tools to increase the luminance range of your shot so that you can get better contrast and not have it all crushed down to grey in the middle. Because right in the middle you've got the grey point. Now, if I just show you a few other bits and pieces, I've actually got some bars and tones here. So if I look at my NTSC bars and tones, we get a very different look. And if I turn on chrominance, you can see the bars for chrominance. As I say, I'm not dealing with chrominance. I really want to look at the luminance of it. I'm going to look at chrominance through a different monitor in another tutorial. But what I want you to see is that we've got bars for the brightness of these individual colours. So you can see these ones here are getting darker. We're a bright bar here to a dark bar here and you can see each one goes down. But this one here and this one here are exactly the same and you can see that we've got two of the same just here. This diagonal line is referring to this bar here which is pure black at one side and pure white at the other. So it's showing us that zero is where we actually start off at pure black and pure white here and you can see this bar in the middle is referring to this grey bar here. So this is just showing us the luminance range. It's a full range and it's measured in IRE. But if we then go to millivolts, I've actually got a, a PAL version here. Same thing, PAL. You can see at the moment it seems to say that it goes from 0.3 or 300 millivolts all the way up to about 1 volt. 
Now, in actual fact, that doesn't agree with the setups that I work with and also the setup in After Effects. So if you're working with PAL, please note if you pull the color bars up that when it says 0.3, it is actually talking about just about pure black. You'll see a couple of bits and pieces do just go below pure black. And at 1, is actually going to be pure white. So if I go across to After Effects here and I've got the same sequence as a, as a composition in After Effects, I've got a little bolt-on which you won't have which is created by somebody called Synthetic Aperture which allows me to have reference monitors to look at. It's a system called Test Gear and you see I've got under Test Gear I've got one called a Waveform Monitor. Now this is actually set up correctly. At the moment that's IRE so it's looking at this bar at the minute and you can see it's going from 100 IRE to 0 but if I go to millivolts so I click here units millivolts which is for PAL notice that it goes from 0 to 700 I think it's 714 actually is the top one so if you're actually working with PAL you'll get a different look in Premiere Pro than you will in After Effects so if you do use scopes in After Effects please bear in mind I think it's the same if you use Color Finesse which actually ships with After Effects you'll find that the range is going to go from 0 to 700 whereas in Premiere Pro incorrectly in my opinion it goes from 300 to 1 volt or 1000 millivolts so this isn't 100% correct for PAL right so we've looked at these different ones let's just have a look we've got the mage footage here now if I pull this through for the mage footage what we can see is the man moving a little bit and as he moves we can see the highlights up here and you can see that's his hair and this white and also these bits and pieces that are reflecting off his actual jacket but also we can see the darkness of the jacket even the darkness of the wall pulling down here so you can see this is showing us the brightness range of our footage that's what the YC waveform is all about and it's particularly useful to get a quick analysis of the footage and see if actually you need to make some changes but just bear in mind if you're working with PAL and you pull up this particular waveform graph that 0.3 equals black and 1 equals pure white whereas if you're actually working with a proper graph it would be 0 for pure black and 714 or 714 millivolts for pure white. In the next tutorial we're going to be looking at the vector scope.